tonight's program is part of uh, a series that stems from a simple piece of data. Um, the Made in Italy is the third most popular brand in the world after Coca-Cola and Visa. Yet, the series is not about the commercial success uh, of the brand only, uh, but also about uh, the Made in Italy as a philosophy, for its values of uh, beauty, of uh, uh, sustainability and uh, uh, durability, uh, both along the historical trajectory and uh, in our contemporary world. This is the reason why the series is called Critical, Made in Italy, and uh, it is linked uh, to uh, a book uh, entitled uh, Made in Italy and Culture, edited by Daniele Balicco. In Italia, quando si parla di Made in Italy, si parla certamente di economia, ma si parla anche di cultura. Di solito a questo concetto, il concetto di Made in Italy, vengono associate quattro A. La prima è alimentazione, il food. La seconda è l'abbigliamento, fashion. La terza invece è l'arredamento. Noi abbiamo dei settori di punta, per esempio nella meccatronica o nelle biotecnologie mediche d'avanguardia. È inevitabile che questi, i primi tre settori, cioè le prime tre A, abbiano un peso simbolico molto forte perché sono legate tutte e tre a una serie di elementi che appartengono alla tradizione culturale italiana profonda, quindi alla storia dell'arte, al cinema, appunto all'habitat, a come è fatta l'Italia, al fatto che l'Italia è un paese incredibilmente policentrico, che ha dei climi molto diversi, che ha quindi una cultura magari alimentare molto diversa, ma anche una cultura linguistica e artistica molto diversa, e così via. Con il concetto di Made in Italy, meno male si descrive questa specie di totalità che è sia produttiva, economica che culturale. Il grosso del Made in Italy emerge fra la fine degli anni 60 e la metà degli anni 80. Sono anni in cui l'Italia a livello economico va molto forte, diventa la quinta potenza economica del mondo. Se voi immaginate gli anni 80 e 90 a New York, per esempio, è molto famoso il fatto che viene conquistato un intero mai della Fifth Avenue con tutte le grandi marche italiane. In qualche modo il mondo dell'Italia inizia a occupare spazio a livello mondiale. Il nostro export è tuttora fortissimo. Con l'export ovviamente parliamo un'altra volta di Made in Italy. La prima parte di questa serie è dedicata al design italiano che è in linea con eh, il tema della eh, settimana della lingua italiana nel mondo organizzata dal Ministero Italiano degli Affari Esteri e della Cooperazione Internazionale che eh, quest'anno è appunto dedicata all'italiano e alla creatività, marchi e costumi, moda e design. E lo scopo principale è quello di mettere in rilievo il ruolo dell'Italia contemporanea come paese G7, eh, come seconda potenza manifatturiera in Europa, la sesta nel mondo, all'avanguardia nel campo dell'innovazione, della ricerca tecnologica e al tempo stesso ancora la culla eh, della cultura tradizionale e dell'arte. I really love to talk about Italian design because of all the regions of design production. Well, one, it has produced uh, such a wide range of really beautiful objects. Uh, but the country has also been very interested in going back and forth between the traditional and the innovative, uh, the handmade and the high tech. And so when we look at everything from furniture, lighting, ceramics, glass, uh, refrigerators, cars, that have been produced in Italy since, you know, even before World War II, but especially ever since. It's just uh, a really stylish and uh, provocative body of work. I think the meaning of Italian design has changed over time. Uh, before World War II, most uh, design objects produced in Italy were produced by hand. There was only a, a small bit of industry. It came later to Italy than it did to other countries in Europe and the US. Um, but after the war, things really changed. You know, um, 
the country became known for being more and more innovative and uh, technically advanced, uh, especially when it comes to just everyday objects like furniture, what they did with plastics and, and rubber uh, was really ahead of the, the game. So by the time you're in the 60s or 70s, you know, it's very futuristic uh, body of work. But the interesting thing is that as we come into the 21st century, uh, there's more and more interest in uh, returning to craft and returning to the traditions that uh, Italy has for centuries, even beyond the, the Industrial Revolution. Uh, there are some um, objects of Italian design that I think will never go out of style. Um, for instance, Joe Ponti's Superleggera chair or the beautiful lamps produced by Artimidi and Floss and Artiluce are just amazing. I have noticed though that uh, some of the, the works that used to stay out of the design conversation, works that were produced by hand, such as glass works by Flavio Poli, uh, for instance, and ceramic works, they're becoming, um, they're, they're starting to be put on the same level as industrial design, uh, which I think is a really exciting change in the 21st century. Our program is the MIX Lab, which focuses on making and innovating with um, technology towards um, creative designs for the future. And this event on Italian design really can showcase this convergence between um, the high-tech nature of fabrication and thinking about design at the highest level coming out of Italy and similar pursuits that we're interested in and our collaborations that cross these borders. Because of its intrinsically interdisciplinary nature, fashion, food, design, the Made in Italy is also a fertile ground to expand and enrich the teaching of Italian language and culture. And the Insera Chair and the Italian program at Moncler State University see in the Made in Italy an occasion to place students in closer contact with contemporary Italy, along with traditional Italy, and to create uh, dynamic synergies with uh, the broader community in our area thanks uh, to the values of the Made in Italy that are as Italian as they are universal. Mm -hmm.